all for coming. We went to the um, site visit. Some of us were there. It's, it's a very nice cemetery. There's a lot of really old stones. I was amazed. Can we go around it? Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone for going to the site visit. So I'll start. I'm Denise Wheeler, Select Board. <coughs> Cliff Emmons, Cal Select Board. Sharon Wynn Fannin, Cal Select Board. Katie Lane Carnes, I'm the Recording Secretary. Mm -hmm. I'm Fletcher Dean, Cal, um, Cal mm -hmm. Cemetery Commission. I'm Rose Palchuk from the Cal Select Board. I'm Andy Christensen from Poplar Hill <coughs> Cemetery Association. I'm Laura Brown from Poplar Hill Cemetery Association. Jennifer Whitman from the Cemetery Commission. Jim, oh, John, we all know John, him. Cal Selectport, John Braven. Jim Barlow, town attorney. Paul Massetti from, from uh, Papa Hill. Massetti, okay. Gotcha. Juanita Nunn, Cemetery Commission. Mm. Reed Charrington, uh, the only unofficial person here. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw some headlights. Mm. So I'm betting that's it's probably John Samantha, I would imagine. So, I was trying to figure out the best way to do this. Um, we normally, at the beginning of our meeting, take public comment on non-agenda items. Hearing none. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none. All right. So, as I said, we went to the um, cemetery and did a site visit. It was some pretty cool stuff there, I gotta say. Um, and we looked at the stream bank that was eroding and you know so there's obviously some work that needs to be done on some of the stones and some of those stones are really really old back to the 1800s so that was pretty cool um well weston kate is buried there yeah I, did you see the the big kate stone yeah wow. so I didn't know, and maybe everybody else does, and I'm the only one who didn't know, but there's a difference. There's, a, there's municipal cemeteries, public cemeteries, religious cemeteries, and nonprofits. So the ones that Callis currently oversees are municipal cemeteries. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what you classify yourself as, if you're a nonprofit or you're a public. Nonprofit. You're a nonprofit, okay. And then there's religious, and I assume the religious ones, the whatever church or religion they're affiliated with, take care of those. So that was, I didn't know there was like four different kinds. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, very good. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. We just did introductions. We Some of us went to the site. The did site they get down to the site? Yep, yep, yeah. It's a pretty amazing place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool. Uh, we did round table introductions, so <coughs> just for the record, do you want to state your name? Okay. <coughs> Tell us who you are. John Zemanskis. I'm chairman of the uh, Cemetery Commission. Okay. Yes. Is anybody else from Cemetery coming? Randy's just, not coming, just missing right? Randy. Randy, okay. Yeah. Maybe he'll show, maybe not, I don't know. So anyways, um, thank you for sending us all the information that I asked you for. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you can just kind of recap for us, the situation that you're in. Um, I guess I'd say first of all that our cemetery association was uh, eagerly hoping it was hoping that we could hang on to it, the cemetery for a long time and you know, take good care of it. We're very proud of the cemetery. Uh, for those uh, who may not know, it was established in 1872 and was the first nonprofit yeah, in, I saw that. in the state of Vermont. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we got an award a, little while, a few years back uh, recognizing that fact oh, cool. from the Secretary of State. Wow. Um, the problem that we faced was, I guess you could say, is climate change because uh, we had a series of storms, particularly the storm that came just before Hurricane Irene. That was in May, right? That was in May. Yeah. And that's when you, we had the, uh, the mudslide that landslide that you saw tonight. So that was treed? What's that? That's, that embankment was treed just like the rest of it? Dead trees, yeah. Okay. That was May of 11, right? 
2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of threw a monkey wrench into our plans, and uh, we quickly realized that we couldn't, um, you know, we couldn't, <laughs> couldn't even ma imagine with the meager funds that we had to address that problem in any meaningful way. Uh, we limped along with what we had for a while, thinking maybe some magic would appear, which didn't, until this year we realized that <clears throat> we're, and our, our funds were going to run out, basically. Mm -hmm. And we still didn't, um, you know, we had people come in and give estimates, we had people look at it, mm -hmm. uh, just pro bono, just look at it. And you mean to fix the stream bank? Yes. Yeah, because in the minutes it says 100,000. Yeah, that was uh, a number that uh, Bill George told us that, I think, at the annual meeting on the advice of somebody he had come in and look at it, but because it was pro bono, it was not an official estimate. Um, mm -hmm. He was just giving us a, a ballpark estimate of what it yeah. would be. Um, so that's what triggered our vote to, uh, to uh, turn it over to Callis, because it's within the town of Callis. Right. Um, it looked, though, by the names on the headstones that there was a significant number of Names that I recognize that were East Montpelier, some were Callis. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm assuming there's probably Plainfield. Hollister was there. Mm -hmm. That Hollister would have been uh, in North Montpelier. So oh, yeah. oh okay. he, That family is one of the original founders uh, that set up the nonprofit for the cemetery back mm -hmm. in 1872. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of them originally were in North Montpelier, but North Montpelier mm -hmm. is in. East Montpelier, right. So, yeah. So, in looking at the Edward Jones, the minutes of your meeting said that there was like five thousand and something dollars last year. Last year, now but 55. now there's now there's twenty two thirty. No, twenty two thirty, two thousand two hundred thirty uh, dollars right. and twenty three cents. And yeah. what caused the? I mean, is it the main? What what caused the decline in the funds? That was spent on. Um, Primarily mowing costs this last summer. These are years worth. Wow. And who does the maintenance there? Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt Haley. And he's been very good about being frugal. Mm -hmm. um, so, but for the past several years, we have spent a little under three thousand a year, and it has not gone up. I think it went up like sixty-five dollars this year, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty stable. Yeah. But it's almost three thousand, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like there's that many plots left available to fill. I don't know what the right terminology is, so you'll have to excuse me. I don't know what the right cemetery words are, but spaces available, rooms to rent, I don't know. A lot of our rooms to rent went over the bank. Did any of this, when that stream bank eroded, did any, any of the caskets no. go into no. the river? That's one of the, I, I'd say that was a point of urgency in our annual meeting, is uh, we can see it's getting very close now, especially on if you drive up there on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had placed, on the, the day after the landslide, we went and we put stakes in the ground. You might have seen some stakes. Yes, we saw two of them. And some of those stakes have gone over the edge now since so it's continuing to further it's continuing erode. To further yeah, and there's a, like there's a set of stones there that look like they're the closest to being the ones that might erode away. Mm -hmm. It's a big I mean, stone with some wee stones. Yeah. Yeah. Your side of it. Yeah. And I mean, other parts of the cemetery that it doesn't look, you know, doesn't look bad at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've. Um, done a number of things to try to take care of it. We've had, uh, we've gone up to try to clean the stones. Uh, we've had, um, we've had help from U32. Uh, uh, I could call it Scoff. It's seniors doing community mm -hmm. service in the spring come. Yeah, you guys have used them, right? They've helped you? No, we've talked about it. Oh. And, and we worked with them to try to remove invasive buckthorn, uh, mm -hmm. honeysuckle, and other invasive plants around the perimeter of Cemetery. Mm -hmm. where, I think for three years, right, Andy? Yeah, yeah. I think for about three mm -hmm. years now we've had mm -hmm. them come. And we've worked together. Yeah. 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 
Well, and there's some pretty old stones there that I imagine look like they could really use a good cleaning. Yeah. You couldn't even you couldn't read the, the words. The last time we had them cleaned was probably 10, 15 years ago, yeah. professionally. Um, I went to the Fairview um, demonstration on cleaning stones. Andy and I, uh, we now have D2, so Andy and I hope to get up and do some D2 cleaning. is? D2 is the, um, the non-toxic non -toxic thing that takes the brown off. Nice. Yeah, it, it's, it does, yeah. Yeah, good. Well, how much, um, how much land was there? Like, you know, you can see that there was a landslide, but I don't, maybe it's just I don't have the eye to know how, you know, was it, like, as long as the table, like, what was the depth of land that used to be there that just went down? To um, well, some of my way to look at this room. You know, it's hard, it's hard for me to estimate. We put, the stakes, we put three feet back from the edge, but that was after the landslide. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of those are... Some of them are gone, and most. Right, of them and somebody are said there used to be trees there. Was it you, Fletcher? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe Fletcher. And you can. And there were trees all the way down to the to the pond. Yeah, the pond. That all just went. Yeah. The trees and all. But yeah. you can look over. And you see can see the, trees. the trunks of the trees still in the water. Yeah. Well, I noticed the uh, gray. In fact, Fletcher brought up. When it's so sandy. You would think the water would percolate in before it went over the brink. But explaining that, Irene came to town and. It must have really inundated and saturated things, so things float over the edge, and that's what caused it. But you can see everything's kind of funneled toward that really severely eroded corner where the yeah. big collapse happened. And that looks like the place that you would need to... Yeah, you mean, you'd, you'd want to fix that drainage problem and redirect the flow away from that edge. That's, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's what's causing it yeah. to continue this slump. One other thing I may say about space available is we went to the Vermont Cemetery Association annual meeting and they had a presentation there about how to reclaim space for your cemeteries. Uh, there is like a, a roadway there. There's a place on the west side towards uh, Route 14 mm -hmm. uh, that could be used for cremains. Um, now tell me, explain to me what cremains is. That's instead of a casket, full, like a full burial with a casket, you could have a you know, smaller boxes or whatever for uh, cremains. Cremation. That's, okay, that's what I thought of it. I want to make sure cremation. I understood yeah. it. Yeah. So there are some strategies mm -hmm. that could be used. To, and, and we're finding that more and more people are actually uh, interested in being mm -hmm. cremated. So there's... Right. And, and when was... I mean, I don't recall what you said. You charge for a plot and for the perpetual care. But when... I don't know, you know, what you charge now, and when was the last time you increased that? 2013, wasn't it, Andy? I believe so. You did the yeah. increase. Yeah, but we are still way below Greenmont Cemetery. Um, Greenmont Cemetery, way below, but in the what they charge? Price. They charge eight hundred dollars. How much it is in the minutes somewhere? Yeah. Where? Which one is that? Okay. The one in Montpelier. Okay. What do we charge? Fletcher Robbins. Oh, like six? Well, you, know, you might remember off the top of your head. What do we charge? I think it's a really Green Mountain, it says it's 800. Yeah. Well, that's what Green Mountain charges. And, and that charge. doesn't include the perpetual care, right? Yeah. yeah. We don't say perpetual care. What do you call it? It's just not part of the. It's <laughs> just You can just pay for the variable. And that's it? And the space. Like you take the there it is, but yeah, it's probably in there too, but, yeah. The cost of cremation is, um, cremation burial is Green Mountain charges 800, Copper Hill charges 300 on weekdays, and... Oh, I didn't see that in the minutes. Yeah. I couldn't figure out why it was different on the weekend than on the weekdays. Well, because we have to pay, the sexton charges more. Um, and both of them include a hundred dollars. So this is three hundred and three seventy-five. This is for the actual plot, the, the burial. Yes, the, the burial, because the plot already is owned in most cases. They have them. So this you're paying for like the, the okay. space, and then you're paying for the act of the burial. But what you got, but the, the, the fees you're describing are for the burials. So, yes. So for the are burial. there. Um, and, and the plots are already owned. Yes. So that's a different question then. Are there plots left to sell? There are a couple, and um, I think it's on the map that Andy sent out. Mm -hmm. um, 
Not many, unless you. Not it looked many like there was the like maybe there was like four, maybe. Yeah, but if you wanted to go to um, cremation burials, then you could increase that. Mm -hmm. So there's so it's three hundred. I'll say I get buried on Wednesday. It's going to cost three hundred dollars total. Period. There's no other cost. If involved. you have a lot already. If you have a lot. Okay. So how much? You have like maybe four lots left. How much are the lots? Oh, the full burial lot. Yeah. What does that mean? For a casket. That's what it's yeah. supposed to. Be. They'll take four caskets, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're charging eight hundred for a four plot. Um, it's four. in our bylaws, which can be a copy up here. Um. So a full. Uh, Full uh, internment lot was uh, six hundred dollars. What is that? I was hoping that's the right year. Full internment lot. That's for the caskets. For four, I believe it's four caskets, right? And it's six hundred dollars yeah. for four. Yeah, for one lot. So the four, would, if you wanted four lots, it'd be uh, six times six hundred times four. But you can fit four caskets in on one lot. Did you suggest it? One lot can accommodate four caskets. No. Oh, okay. okay, that's my question is how much is it for, yeah. so it's so much for a lot, so much for the burial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the cremation stuff was 300 and 375 and the lot is 600. Mm -hmm. Andy, yeah. how, much, how many plots are in yet that lot? Actually, this says full interment lot, single grave, 600. Right. Single grave. That's a three by five. Feet. Feet. Yeah. Three and a half feet by 11 feet. And a single cremation lot is three hundred and fifty dollars. What are you looking at? Actually, why don't I just just here. Oh. I don't have mine anymore. I'm just trying to get understand how financially it got so desperate. I guess we stopped selling lots. There weren't any more lots that uh, were advertised. Okay. For a long time, we thought it was all quote. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Remember what a cemetery looks like it's full? There can also be graves that are no longer marked. That's a big question in the rest of the cemeteries in Calais. There are, it may look like there's a space, mm -hmm. but there may be a stone that's been taken away because it crumbled. Oh. So it's one of those things where we have to, we would have to like hire someone to do we have to do like a some kind of yes. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like why is very wary of that? Because he has dug places where there's so it's just that because when you were saying it looks like there's spaces, but like, that might not necessarily be spaces that are actually there. But some of the old lots were a forecast of and okay. there's one monument and maybe a cremation area <laughs> there yeah. or one casket. And there's still all this other space. So, okay, so there's space available. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Do you have good maps of that? Are there good maps of all those definite? That's the part there are maps. Don't have. <laughs> I'm not judging you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have a collection of maps. We actually have a, uh, the original map. The rolled up. From the yeah. 1800s. Yeah. And then we have, mm -hmm. uh, well, we have a map. Dave Colburn was sort of our mm -hmm. database guy. Yeah. Uh, that was the, the thing I sent here. Um, right, yeah, I saw that. So, database. Yeah. But you know, I don't believe that there's many stones or any stones that have really crumbled up there. They're pretty well preserved for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw one that had been, it looked like the top had been knocked off and somebody put it back That's together. It was a really old one. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only extra grave that's unmarked that I'm aware of is this yeah. one lot where the hired man uh, was told he could be buried there. And, uh, uh, he's there somewhere in that lot, but who? didn't get marked. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But he was uh, a hired man for the guy who went to the Sharon's lot. buddy. And Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's probably more than one, but, but yeah. Oh. That sounds... What are you talking about? Never mind. It's not, it's, it's not relevant. It's just interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say just a few words about the Perpetual Care Fund, which is probably misnamed. Back in the, in the teens and the 20s, mm -hmm. a perpetual care fund was established 
the results of the, the, the bodies of which are going to be touched from uh, uh, right, things were. like mowing and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, this summer, I took on, on myself the task of uh, digitizing the entire archive. Wow. It's several boxes, which I'm hoping that either the town clerk here will be excited to receive. Or, or not. Or not. <laughs> or if not, maybe I, I checked with the Vermont Historical Society mm -hmm. or something. But uh, we have a lot of paper. And in the process of doing that scanning, I discovered something interesting is that during the, uh, up until 1959, people paid uh, a fee every year for the mowing. Mm -hmm. and the families. The families. Yeah. And um, if they um, didn't pay it, they didn't get mowed. And, uh, and certain people could go and mow their lot. Their plot. They want to yeah. it, uh, In lieu of paying this sort of annual fee. In addition to that, um, monies were raised in each year with an annual fundraising effort, uh, sending letters out to the members that own lots of the cemetery. Uh, in 1959, there was a rubber band full of envelopes about this thick of all the envelopes that came back, address not known, uh, the recipient was dead, and so forth. And I had noticed up to that point that uh, there was an increasing effort to try to raise money that was failing for people. This is like it was established in 1872, so by 1960, it was um, 80 plus years of dispersal. Mm -hmm. um, in 1960, there was a request made. Um, uh, uh, they had a lawyer, the Poplar Hook got a lawyer, and they uh, freed it up out of those constraints and put it into a, a, like a mutual fund. <coughs> Um, and the members of that board then, I think, determined that it was impossible or it was a losing cause to raise money every year, and they used that money. And that's how that original fund got used up. Everybody on the existing board, well, it actually goes back to, um, uh, you know, probably 20, 30 years ago, uh, the institutional memory was lost, mm -hmm. and so each succeeding uh, board uh, on in Poplar Hill Cemetery Association just said, okay, this is how the, the people that got me into of this board did it, so we'll just keep doing it. <laughs> and so uh, that's why um, about three or four years ago we're uh, looking into uh, getting a nonprofit status with the IRS so that we can do some fundraising. And after uh, some laborious efforts at, at doing the application and submitting it uh, ultimately um, uh, failed. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't happen. The, mm -hmm. there, was a, there was another flood, I think, and the, the tax department <laughs> said they never received it. Uh, and so um, what happened then was, was that uh, uh, we just kind of fell back into the pattern that the previous boards did. And the uh, but here's a there's kind of a funny thing is is that in scanning the documents I found that in 19 I think it was 63 it was in the early to mid 60s we were granted the nonprofit status from IRS that we had been seeking. Oh wow! <laughs> and because of the loss of institutional memory, we didn't, right. nobody on the board knew that. So then you could that means you could do fundraising. We could, but then by that time, that was this year that I discovered right. this. And, and then uh, realized that it was unlikely we could raise the monies needed to do uh, right. the repair of the bank. Well, and then something in the minutes talked about grants. Um, have you applied for any grants and been denied? We looked at grants originally about three or four years ago, and um, it, it, we didn't get. It was unsuccessful. But Bill George who works for the East Montpelier Fire Department, said mm -hmm. that uh, grants, uh, nonprofits are persona non grata when it comes to these federal grants, mm -hmm. and that municipalities uh, have priority over nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So that was part of what he yeah. said was uh, considered by the members in attendance, and that uh, swayed our thinking to also to vote. Mm -hmm.
because we both had the experience of having failed to get grants, and we also uh, heard that uh, there's reasons why we failed. Right. Well, it's my understanding, and um, Jim can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not an automatic that the town has to take over the cemetery. If you're still have your status, we would not be responsible for taking it over until or if, if you completely dissolved, which means you would no longer be the oldest nonprofit in the state. Mm -hmm. But we would still have the option of not at that point as well. Right? Um, or not. Uh, Jim? I thought there was a May in there. There's, There's a May. May. Yeah. There's a May in there. I was going back and looked at that statute. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's. We cited it the first time as far as the number goes, but it's upon dissolution that assets may be transferred to the county. And in the case of the May, then what happens? In the case that May. In, in the case of May not, what happens? Yeah. It may not? Well, that's an interesting um, question. I, mean, I think it leaves, over the, it leaves open the possibility that there could be a successor nonprofit that takes over the, the um, cemetery or that it's transferred to another uh, uh, private association that's running cemetery. Um, yeah, I just, have you checked out any of those other nonprofits to maybe take over? I have, I'm not aware of any. I don't know what nonprofit. Would. I don't either. Do you know what kind of nonprofit are out there? Like for example, there, I mean, if, if Greenmont Cemetery, for example, was run by a private nonprofit similar to you, mm -hmm. theoretically, your cemetery and your responsibilities could be transferred over to that association. If I don't think really. If they were willing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what might be. I don't know what might be out there, but it's just it's just part of the discussion that we should have. Mm -hmm. Because for the for Callis to take it over, that's a lot of money that is needed for repair. To be quite honest. Um, what if, Madam Chair, if if so? So Andy was talking about municipalities having better, greater effect at getting grants. Right. Um, what if uh, I'm just thinking aloud. If like a, a municipal fire district was formed that involved East Montpelier and Callis townships. To take it over. And then. Um, you said fire, did you mean fire? They call it fire district. Oh, it's anything. Just, it's a, anything. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm like asking this to like Jim too, it's, it's a municipal fire. entity water. that's separate yeah. aside from the town. Yeah, yeah. not necessarily. What water purpose. companies do that. Right, right. Yeah, it's a fire that's for me. Yeah, well. That's what it's but that's, called. What it's, that's what it's yeah. called for whatever reason. It's probably how it started out. Gotcha. It should be a municipal erosion district. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because there is, because, you know, they did, Bill George did say it sounded like it was a East Montpelier problem being given to Callis in the minutes. Um, so I just wonder, have you talked to East Montpelier at all? Or did, are you thinking Callis because it's in Callis? Mm -hmm. I think the, the reason he said East Montpelier is because uh, many of the people initially came from North Montpelier, which okay. is part of East Montpelier. Yeah. But yeah. It's it not is exclusively. Yeah. Yeah. No, not no, no. exclusively. I mean, you can look at the names and you can see that they're yeah. family yeah. names from, from all over. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's very So I just want to, you know, I just want to have a, you know, kind of an open discussion about what the options might be. Um, well, and I, we certainly are going to be out of money after next year, right. completely out of money, right. and we may not have enough even to get through. Why don't have enough for next no. year? You know, maybe we could set up a, a meeting sometime throughout through the winter, with in the East winter Montpelier. with East Montpelier. That's what I'm thinking. And at least have it as one of the agenda items we do with that occasionally anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then we could have this conversation. Because there may, there may be an opportunity to, to work with East Montpelier share the so cost. to share the cost. I mean, we do that right now with the fire department. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so there might be a joint venture opportunity here so that it doesn't all fall on callous taxpayers. Because right now our cemetery commission operates on 49, like $49,000 a year. Yeah. So. 
And Last night I got on the internet and yeah. uh, I checked out the Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah. And they do a lot of stuff with water uh, and stuff like that. And uh, so they got a good thing on there. They did a lot for Irene when they had yep. the flood down south. So, yeah, they did. Uh, uh, maybe that might be a small job for them to think about if we have to have take it over. Yeah. There. That's a good idea, John. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bill George had some information on that too. Yeah. Because there was a big landslide on Route 14 right near his home. Mm -hmm. And um, he spoke of that, and I don't know exactly. Yep. He, he's knowledgeable about it. So I guess maybe we should make a list. One would be to, and I'm assuming Katie, you're going to mm -hmm. keep track of the list. Mm -hmm. One would be to have a joint meeting with um, the East Mount Players Select Board and their cemetery people and our cemetery people and you folks. Um, we can put Army Corps of Engineers on there. We can put um, the fire district idea. Right, vis-a-vis right. -vis or a non-profit. So, so just for yep. clarification, East Montpelier Fire Department's a non-profit, and then they invoice us, and they invoice East Montpelier. We have a contractual arrangement, which, which um, in addition to just having them provide us services and us and us them revenues. Right. Um, there's an allocation, there's a formula in there for how the, the costs are allocated across two towns. It's based on kind of a complicated formula, but it involves basically population, the level of use, and all that stuff. So, I mean, maybe we could arrive at the same thing if you state a nonprofit, um, or maybe if, if, if this is true, that you're more likely to get grant monies or Army Corps assistance, mm -hmm. set up a fire, municipal fire district. Um, so what are you saying is the difference between a municipal fire district and um, a, what the fire department does between California? Well, well, the fire, we should have Jim chime in on this, but the, <laughs> right. yeah. the fire thing throws everyone off. My understanding is you can set up an entity that performs municipal type functions, okay. but they're, they're separate and aside from the a, actual town. A fire district is a limited purpose municipal entity providing services to a defined geographic region. They were originally established to provide fire services. Now typically they provide water or sewer services. But they are a government and they, they they're their own governing they body. They're their own governing body. Right. Perhaps the, the simpler way to do it rather they than they can assess taxes too, right? They can levy taxes. In theory. You, you, you might right. you might just you might consider rather than creating a new entity Perhaps just having a, an interlocal agreement between Callis and East Montpelier that could form a single board to oversee the operation, okay, to which each municipality contributes some funding each year. Would that, when they would, like and, they, and they would still stay as the Poplar Hill Cemetery? Depending on how you do it. Nonprofit? Okay, or, or it could be that they could dissolve and transfer their assets to this new joint entity. Yeah. Which Another, is like what the fire departments do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, similar. So, Another thought for you, too, and then just budget. I mean, how much does it cost to keep it going every year? Uh, it's been about around 3000 I mean, if 3, they just did a, you know, you guys do social service agency um, mm -hmm. right. uh, appropriations every year at town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, $1,500 mm -hmm. from Callis and $1,500 yeah. from East Montpelier as a social service agency appropriation mm -hmm. would fund all their maintenance. But the repair, the repair, and but in the interim, but in the, but in the yeah. interim, yeah, and a um, long, longer term plan. I can get since okay. you have never been part of that before. You'll have to fill out a form, and this is really good timing because now is the time to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. A form? What are you talking about? To two, two, two requests being put on the callous warning to be a social services agency, and I would think East Montpelier probably has the same. Mm -hmm. type to get an um, annual appropriation. To get an annual appropriation. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you are you which town are you guys from? Uh, East, East Mount Pillar. You're East Mount Pillar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and what you're saying is go to the East Mount Pillar Select Board. That's yeah, I mean what Jim is suggesting for in the interim. It, it, it doesn't preclude right. and concur and you know would hap it would happen in March. And then you'll know you have a budget for next year, for next year's maintenance, while you work on some of these other right. things this, this that are longer-term term yeah. solutions. Good idea. 
and you have a little bit of money left over, so it wouldn't even have to be a full version of the next year. Mm -hmm. well, it would be good if you didn't eat into what you had left. You right, know, yeah, it's nice to not have try to cover it your completely, costs, you know. You know, your funds completely spent. And then, I'm just thinking out loud, too, maybe, maybe the Poplar Hill Association could work with the cemetery commissions from each town and start working on a project, how we're going to fund the repair of the bank. Right. Um, give you, you know, the cemetery commissions of each town giving you some manpower to sort of undertake this project and maybe, you know, just a group mm -hmm. joint project to um, come up with some right. ideas come up with some funding ideas for yeah. repairing it, and then ultimately that allows you to, you know, get that repaired, get a, a, an annual potential funding source from the social service agency appropriations, and you can keep existing as a... Yeah. You could make Jim available. Well, there is one other problem, too, is that all of us, I think, are You're done. becoming elders, or yeah. are elders, and he's the youngest. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, it sounded like you all still would really had your heart and soul in this. So there might still be an opportunity for you to still be part of, you know, of the fix. With three members of our board, it's it's getting harder to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're a, sort of a shadow of our former, former selves. selves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it, and there's somebody in there said that, that you know there was some younger blood that was needed. Well, that's true everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not just you folks. It's across Vermont. Right. Right. I mean, and, and do you put out a a request for people to to become a board member? Maybe Reed wants to become a board member. Except um, Reed. Oh yeah, because Reed's in Calus. Brownington. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's got experience. I think I got, out I think I got experience there, Reed. <laughs> but Reed didn't seem like he was very interested. <laughs> so he came to the site. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. I, I just wanted to say, um, uh, there's something called the Vermont Old Cemetery Association, and I think they do small grants. I don't know how small they are. What's it called again, Reed? The Vermont Old Cemetery Association. Yeah, been we have been around for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the meal, we talk to them. But the grants are microscopic okay. compared to the needle. And, and what about their, their uh, ability to give advice, though? Uh, I think their advice is more on things like relocating graves of um, if the, the danger. There's also um, restoring stones. Yeah. That's what most of their grants are for. They're not yeah. into. Um, so, okay. could you get some grants along those lines to do some cleaning? Well, they might be able to get grant, grants for cleaning, but um, I'm fairly certain we couldn't get grants to touch the bank. Well, no, but I mean, if this is what Reed's talking about, there's obviously some stones there that are in desperate need of cleaning and maybe some other kind of repair work. That might be an opportunity to save some of the money that you have and some of the money that you might get appropriated to do some of that work. A friend of mine is the president. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Tom Giffen. Oh, got a rub. Fletcher. Fletcher? So, um, I'm just noticing. I mean, Andy's come to a couple of cemetery commission meetings, at least at least two, and explained the situation. I I get a sense that this is more that they're planning to go out of business, and one is because of the enormity of this um, repair that you're looking at for the restoration of the bank. And number two is just that your funds are dwindling down to nothing. So I don't know if you all, I, my sense was that you were planning on going out of business this month. So, and now we're, we're talking about reviving you and keeping you limping along. You're out of the grave. For a couple of years or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering about the urgency of, because it looks like the repairing or restoring this bank was so daunting that you just said, we're just this little tiny nonprofit. There's no way we can afford this, so who could? And I think you were looking to Callus to being able to leverage grants or whatever to be able to do it. So I just, you know, when I stand there and look over the bank and I see that gravestone over here that's 10 feet away or whatever, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm just thinking about how long is this gonna take, you know? <laughs> And, and uh, John and I were walking in different places. We saw where the, the ground had sloughed away pretty recently. So, 
has anybody given you, a, I mean, it sounds like there's a sense of urgency on your part that it needs to be done right away. And as, um, uh, as we heard, you know, our, our budget is $49,000 right now through the town. Would that increase? There's no way that we could, I mean, we, I don't think we could go to the townspeople and ask them to chip in $100,000 to repair this. We, we can't never expected get, that to yeah. happen. There wouldn't be any one entity that would ever fund that. Yeah, so what is the, what is your best scenario that, that could happen there? Well, first I'd say that your description is very accurate. That's uh, So you are looking to just be done. I, I thought maybe you were looking to be have a way to not have to be done. I think that um, you know, Fletcher is, is correct in that, in that we look around the room at the annual meeting, all the gray hairs, everyone is pretty much as old, as old or older than the board. There's a, there are some. I was there. What's that? I was there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I was just about to say there's a. There is, callous, though. <laughs> there is a reporter. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was, um, no, there's some younger people, like they're probably in their 40s, in their 30s, 40s, but um, they're, at least the ones I talk to, they're busy with their lives and stuff, and mm -hmm. they're not terribly excited about getting involved uh, yeah. with the cemetery. Um, I, I, the one uh, point I'm concerned about is, uh, in terms of the urgency, was is that, and I, I wish I could speak about, more coherently about this, but I was led to believe in the annual meeting uh, from Bill George that there's a, a funding cycle coming up that we're uh, a municipality to apply, you know, uh, and I don't know what the time frame is. You mean for grants? For grants. Because there was some mm -hmm. more monies coming. Uh, grants aren't as easy as they sound mm -hmm. because you get the money, yes, but then there's a lot, a lot of behind the scenes legwork involved with administering a grant. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of accounting, there's reports that have to be written. So there's a lot of man hours or woman hours generally is what it amounts to, put into administering a grant. It's not like they just give you the money and you say thank you and go do your thing. There's a lot, a lot of work involved in administering and keeping track of a grant. Is and it right small here? dollar amounts? It's not, a, most mm -hmm. of them are not anywhere near $100,000. No, right, right. Mm -hmm. And then usually in the town business, we have to foot the bill, and, and then, then we do the paperwork, and then we get reimbursed. Right, so, yeah, so usually. I just want to look at this from another standpoint. What is the risk of this bank continuing to slough off? Does anybody have any kind of a best guess scenario of how many years this would take for it to reach that gravestone? and? What about moving the gravestone out of the way? I was going to ask uh, that instead of that. instead of spending a hundred thousand dollars to well just to do the, the work bank. that to stabilize that bank, you probably probably have to move that first set of graves just to get a truck back in there. Yeah, that's right. So I think right. that's a given. Um, How much does it cost? But the longer you wait, the more it's going to cost to fix because you're losing room to work. Do you have any written estimates from anyone about this? No. Because it would cost a lot of money. To Just to get the estimates. Do we know anybody? To do anything well, like for this? for Larrabee, construction. <laughs> anybody with a dump Rick truck DeWolf? and a backhoe? Right. Who's that? Rick, Rick yeah. Yeah. engineering. Yeah, civil engineering. Who else do we? Just trying to see if we know anybody to get some reasonably priced help <coughs> to, to go out and look at it. Well, I think we're thinking about it through a cemetery lens, but the erosion issue is common. So maybe state. Yeah, the state could should at least be able to recommend. Well, in the minutes it said something about Bill George talked to somebody at the state, and that's where the hundred thousand dollars came from. Or was that just kind of a flyby look? That wasn't a real. That was a flyby look. Yeah. And I think he was sort of basing it on the erosion on Route 14 mm -hmm. near the bridge that's now being repaired. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I don't know the details, but hmm. knowing how much that cost. Okay, so let's think about what. You had anything else, Fletcher? No, not right now. Okay, just trying to think. Okay, let's see what our first steps might be. Um, it sounds like maybe talking with East Montpelier 
and I know you're not interested in long term, but I think maybe short term getting that appropriation request in, even if it's only just to give us another year of maintenance costs being covered. Mm -hmm. About three thousand dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. um, and then working with having this joint meeting with East Montpelier because they may have some ideas, mm -hmm. and or they may say no, we're not interested, and then we're back to what do we do? Do but they have a cemetery commission too, East yes. Montpelier? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think, I think all towns have to, don't they? So they don't have to. Oh. Well, you have it, it, somebody has to do something. What you said earlier. There's no cemetery commission to select for. Right, right, yeah. Right. Um, so that's what I want to know. So you're suggesting that we go to the town and ask that it be warned. So you would go to Palace and ask that it be warned. Yeah, there's a form you fill out. I'm gonna. I've got a note to get the form to Andy. And you just fill it out, it's like one page. And so okay. we can, but we can ask the town oh, right here just if you are not from Callis? No. We can ask Callis. I don't think. You can ask why not. We have a number of non profits yeah. that yeah. request There's, money from the town, you know. Town, you know different state shelters, oh, yeah. 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 community yeah. action, senior citizens, better governments. But I mean, and we could explain it. In this appropriation, that it might be a one or two like, year time request. Yeah, I know. The um, library as we and then we can explain it on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know that we're yeah. working to come up with a long term solution, but in the meantime, we have to have a means to um, take care of, of what's there. Maybe you folks could look at a small grant to get some help to clean the stones, or. or is there an imperative around that? I mean, is that the same as as the erosion and some of the other issues? Like, if if you don't keep them clean, is it harder to do when you do it? I I think that's a that's a non-issue. I think right now, yeah, that's what it's I was taken saying. us years to get around to each cemetery, and okay. we haven't even finished mm -hmm. within Callis, and we've been doing this for yeah. over five years. So. Yeah, I, I think cleaning stones is something that yeah, more is important, more, more important, near important issues. <laughs> that's what okay. they're what they're up against. I had uh, my own family monument cleaned this year, individually, yeah, as I do down in Hope Cemetery and in Wildberry and a couple of other places yeah, that so I have family monuments. Yeah, that's what we, we've done here in Callis, but we have volunteer days and nobody shows up. It just turns out it's commissioners and law. No, I had them, I had them <laughs> professionally so. done. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. we had some professionally done, but it was quite costly and we're getting blowback from people in the town. It looks They're really done. nice. Yep. Yeah, it looks great. If pressure anybody, washers clean them up pretty good. Yeah. Well, they use a special agent. It's bad for granite instead yep. of stones. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. it takes yep. way yeah. It's okay oh, really? for granite, oh, okay. but not uh, marble or any of the older stones. Slate. Right. That yeah, yeah, it beats yeah. on them. Huh? Okay. Anyway, if anybody wants to go look at Upper Old Fairview Cemetery right now, they're in Primo condition. Where is that one, Fletcher? On the Callis Marshfield Road. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're going up. It's on the left. The yep. And uh, the, and they look like they're brand new. They glow. It's amazing. Yep. How well, it so yeah. So on the other hand, I mean, it would look like a cemetery that people. Right. Might be more interested. But I, but still, I mean, if it's not the biggest priority, then I think at least putting our and especially putting Laura and Peter's energy, the things that we're asking right. them to do when they're feeling like, okay, you guys are running uh, thread, thread bare mm -hmm. and you, and you, you're here because of that and, right. um, I'm not sure what the timing might be to get a joint meeting because I know towns, because we are, are starting to work on budgets and town reports and stuff like that, so. We can make an overture though, right? Right, I, I mean, I can reach out to them and talk to um, Seth Gardner and Bruce Johnson, who's their administrator. Well, we will be having a meeting with them. We do like every December on fire department. Fire department, stuff. so we could maybe do it then. Yeah. Fire department. So, um, as far as the administration of a grant, um, I, I've handled several large grants. I, I was the director of the Good Samaritan Haven homeless shelter in Barrie, mm -hmm. and the Good Neighbors uh, Family home, Homeless Shelter 
in, also in Barry, and each time uh, our budget was over 200,000 each year for each of those. But in addition to that, uh, twice we raised 400,000 for, uh, for remodeling, and that was all grants. Yeah, I just know from our staff here the computer reporting requirements and stuff now are much more significant than they used to be. Well, I, I did all that. Yeah. And it depends if it's federal or state, too. It was mostly federal. Yeah, and the federal so government wants a ridiculous. lot more. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get a sense of where we're at so I know how to plan agendas and stuff going forward. Jim, do you have anything else to add to enlighten us? You were, talk, um, uh, yeah. you were talking about uh, $3,000 uh, and probably two fifteen hundred dollar uh, units from mm -hmm. Callis and East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And we've got Wyatt already with, uh, mowing that. So I mean, he's already doing he wrote, it. He mows it Wyatt nothing. has been doing it for a long nothing. time. But, 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 but Wyatt gets paid from them, not right. from us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. But yeah. yeah, we can't just yeah. pay him out of our cemetery commission yeah. funds. Yeah. No, no, because it's not no. a hell of cemetery. So, so we are going to owe him for one more bill, I think. Um, uh, last of the game. Yeah, so your funds are even more depleted. Yeah. yeah. Did you say there's property on the west side of 14 that's part of the cemetery? No. Uh, no, not on the west side of 14, but on okay. the west side of the cemetery facing 14. I see. Okay. I'm missing yeah, I think we walked, yeah, we walked over there. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we're going to get you the forms to fill out to request some money. I'll reach out to East Montpelier and see when we might get to together. I don't know what people's schedules are like, but it's it's two cemetery commissions, two select boards, and you folks. So people, mm -hmm. you know, this scheduling it could be a little a little difficult. Mondays are generally mm -hmm. East Montpelier has their select board meetings on Mondays. We generally have ours on Mondays. So that's usually a, a good day for us. I know my board has usually got their schedules open for Monday nights. So times. it would be important between now and then, too, for these folks to have this, a similar meeting with East Montpelier stuff mm -hmm. to get them up to speed and get them thinking about it and then we'll convene. Mm -hmm. You know, I also am away an awful lot. I'm going to be gone all of November. I have another commitment that I'm not going to tonight, every Monday night. So I sort of feel like Andy cannot do all the meetings, although he is the most knowledgeable. <laughs> so, um, can you get other folks on the board to step up? Well, this we is one more. I think Our we're board. seeing it right yeah, here. That's, that's, it. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the that's really the that's problem. Really, that's that's that a problem. problem. That yeah. is really the yeah. problem. It's a huge problem. Well, so, it'll be one meeting, as I see. I mean, just to let them know what we're thinking and what you're thinking and what we're willing to do but, in the interim and but I wonder if we get could, them on board. Can we just skip that and instead of having them have to do us another meeting with East Montpelier right, we and then we all come together with East Montpelier. Can we But it's it's narrow it's it? us advocating for them. And and so, so there's a lot of processing mm -hmm. that won't have happened. We've already had right. a lot of processing here that right. on the email over the last month and a half, two I'm just all to, summer. I could, have, I could probably meet with Seth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? I might be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. My time is uh, is is questionable at this point because yeah, we're yeah. dealing with some health crises. So. Right. Yeah, and that's obviously more important. Yeah. I think so. that's. I mean, yeah. And we, if we have a meeting with the select board, we can we can bring it bring it forward. It's just for them to hear from you mm -hmm. first, and also right. to understand where you guys are. I. I I get it. You're you've already you've already given the energy to the board to mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. cemetery to keep to carry it this far, and you're asking us for help, and we're kind of obviously feeling yeah. a little, <laughs> which right. is where you yeah. are too, right. a little overwhelmed right. like we are. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 So we need it is. we need time to process, and we have but we have peers in East Montpelier, and. Um, that's the place to start is open the conversation yeah I mean, ask if you guys at least open the door yeah well and i then we, have, and then we can yeah. have you know a, a joint it could meeting. be an email too right. i mean you can do that yeah right you can send it to bruce johnson and to seth yeah you know if Andy sends them an email and we can 
Our, our minutes are public, so when Katie gets the minutes up, you can send them a copy of the minutes from this meeting, which might help them understand. That'd be helpful. Yeah. yeah. You know, here, here's, we met with the Cal Select Board and Cemetery Commission. Here's the minutes. Here's what we talked about. Here's some, and Katie's got a list of the ideas. So they won't have to start right from scratch right. like we did. And I think also being really clear with them that, yes, the cemetery is in, in Calus. Right. Um, but it's right across the line from East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. It's part of the North Montpelier community, and it has served that corner of East Montpelier mm -hmm. for, what, 100 years, 150 well, years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so making making really sure they understand the hook. Right. For Cliff, do you have any questions or comments? Um, is it correct? Uh, I understand that there are um, Civil War veterans interred in the cemetery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been any research done into um, mm -hmm. what national um, preservation of uh, Civil War cemetery era cemeteries? There are options there. Um, have you looked into any of those possibilities? This is the first I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Well, Katie will put it on the list. Mm -hmm. That's, a good, idea. That's a good idea. Wow. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, because they're very interested in preserving wow. the monuments mm -hmm. and. Especially if you have older mm -hmm. stones that could be considered monuments, that really opens up a door to a, a lot mm -hmm. of funding. You mean grants or just funding? Funding. Just funding. Because just funding would be great. Yeah, <laughs> do a whole boatload of paperwork. There's definitely on. groups out there that. The uh, yeah. reason I know about this is I used to work for a company that um, installed ticketing systems at national parks and historic monuments. And I was the guy who was assigned to go through the South working with all of those. And there were a lot of cemeteries involved. Yeah. So you do know what it's called? Yeah. The Did you look it up? Um, I can. Certainly, do some research. There's, there's a number of them, though. Yeah. Huh, I wonder if there's one that's specifically for Vermont, because don't forget we've got that stone over at Memorial Hall that's got the the veterans, mm -hmm. Civil yeah. War, and right. whatnot veterans on it. And I think there was some funding that was gotten. Mm -hmm. Was there funding that was gotten for that from no, some? No, we didn't have any funding. Some something they got funding somehow to add more names mm -hmm. to that monument and get it cleaned or something. Who comes around and puts the flags up for the vet for um I think the quiet or something. Well somebody comes to work. Kids at, uh, in six, I think the sixth graders do it. Yeah. Or third Elliot graders. Morris is involved in that. Excuse me? Elliot Morris is involved in, in the flags? He would know all about that. Yeah. Elliot? He doesn't for Cal He's on the long. East Montpelier yeah. Sanitary Commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know that he, he wouldn't put them up in Calus, yeah, but some somebody in, does. I saw some in Poplar. Why, yeah, who why, puts them up? why does he buys a bunch of them and he puts some of them up and then there's they a day where the school brings a bunch of kids over and they do it in the beginning of spring. Oh, okay. Around Memorial Day. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Used yeah. To be they the women's relief. Yeah. Yeah. Was it the women's relief corps? The Stowe the 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 Women's Relief Corps, which yeah, is pretty much to Abandoned. Yeah, and then they said, we don't want to no. do it anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same situation. Yeah, kind of the same yeah. situation. You know, yeah. it's one of the oldest mm -hmm. groups in the United States is the Stowe Women's Relief Corps. Be glad you don't have a building to maintain. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they have a shed. <laughs> so, are you guys, I mean, I think this has been a really good discussion, and there's some ideas out there yeah. and mm -hmm. some opportunities, I think. Thank you for. Yeah, for the, for the work that you've done. Yeah, for I mean, this can't be it. easy yeah. for you folks. No. You know, no. I'm sure it's not. It's, a, it's an emotional. It's a labor of love. Right. It's an emotional issue, I, and I appreciate that. So you are going to send out the minutes with mm -hmm. the one, two, three mm -hmm. ideas of. Right. Well, that'll and that'll help you open the door, right. I think, for discussing mm -hmm. things with East Montpelier, even if you start with Bruce and Seth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know their email addresses? Yeah, Anybody she's got them. Well, she, yeah, put them oh, they'll be on all that. On those emails yeah. I've sent you? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I will talk to Seth first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 he's on the website tomorrow. He's my neighbor. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I'll invite him over for coffee in cemeteries. Yeah. 
and share and and share cows. <laughs> I'll probably run along the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some coffee? He doesn't stop. Let's right. play right. polo. Give it some milk in there. Oh yeah, we learn how to play polo. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Do you have a copy of your bylaws? You said something about your bylaws. Um, this is, this is no, this is oh, this, a, this is taken from the bylaws, but this is it has the. Um, I know you have them. In. You can email them to me. Yeah. You don't have to have them tonight. Just scan them and send them. Yeah, just scan them and send them to me, and we can post them in this in this Google folder. Just so you know, if you go on the Callis, Town of Callis website, you'll see where there's the minutes, and that's where Katie will post the minutes that you can use to talk with Seth. And they'll be on the uh, calendar. Cal can we go to the calendar? It's in the minutes and on the agenda, the link. The link. The link to the public folder so that if Seth and those guys want to look at documents, you won't have to, maybe you won't have to resend them all again. They could just go there and send them the link. Send them the link mm -hmm. to the documents. Can I upload to that or not? Probably not, right? No. Okay. No, but we no. can. Yeah, yeah well, you send them to us. What you'll see is in the minutes that Katie publishes, there will be a link to the folder where all these documents. Yeah. You can copy that link and send, and send it. it to anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but, but they can't. But they can't. We might be able to share there. the they folder with anybody. But any folder, any documents like that, our bylaws, I'd have to send. You send them to, to Denise, and yeah, Denise and I have Katie yeah. load them into the right. folder. We can, can you share the folder yeah, yeah. for tonight's so. meeting. No, it's Google Docs. So right, it's a public we, folder. It's that public documents folder. Yeah, I know, but but if Cliff could actually share it. There's a specific folder that we could share and give them permission Andy. to load stuff into if we decide we want to do that. I think that's not really in tune with our website policy right now. Well, I, I mean separately. He could share the documents in there into a folder, a separate folder. It wouldn't be a town folder. Just send it over to him. So if you so look at the... Poplar Hill agenda for tonight. And there's see the link right there. Oh yeah. You click on that. Okay, that can download whatever. Right. Yeah, you should be able to download. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with yeah. oh, okay. yeah. stuff too. So. Right. That I think that's the better way to do there it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, it's all public knowledge. I'll email you the bylaws. I'm not sure, but the bylaws I might have with me tonight may not be the most, most recent. Current. Ones, okay, so. yeah, just when you get a chance, if you send them to me, then we can put them in the folder. And these are all documents that East Montpelier can then mm -hmm. already have a collection of. So it'll make it easier for them. So just before we leave, to make it clear for me, they, you are going to continue to exist then and sort of um, look at some alternative funding to keep the cemetery going for the next year. We are and we are not to get the funding, town of, though. And the town of, yeah, and, mm -hmm. for, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the town of Callis is not going to take over immediately. Poplar Hill Cemetery. Mm -hmm. No, at I least think immediately. Right. We're, we're not gonna be taking this over as of October. This it month. doesn't sound like you want to, but this hinges, it seems to me, on the fact that we have to get a little bit more money to pay for the upkeep of the cemetery. Right. I mean, I think there's for some another things, year. I, I think it's not maybe fair to say we don't want to. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that this is a big, this is a big deal for us to have to take this over. You know, it's a lot of money that's needed to fix the erosion, and it's it's not that easy because you guys have to officially dissolve, and I don't know what paperwork you have to do to officially dissolve. Don't we have a lawyer abandoned. here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, either. I don't know what that what they have to do to officially dissolve. They have to come up with a plan of dissolution. It has to be approved by their members. That has to provide for how they will wrap up their business and how they will transfer their remaining assets. Um, once See, that's approved by the membership, then you record that or you, you uh, transmit that to the Secretary of State's office. And there's probably going to be some public comment or public opportunity to, to do something. And uh, once that period of time passes, the remaining officers of the entity, um, although you can't do any business, the one thing that you can do is effectuate, sign the documents to transfer those assets away and close up the entity's business. Mm -hmm. okay. So there are some official documents that... Yes, there are. You can't, you can't just say we're not going to hold any more meetings. Um, you do have to go through this process of winding up your business and giving the Secretary of State's office. Where are those? I mean, where are those 
Where are those directions informed? On the Secretary of State's website? No, they're in Vermont statutes. It's Title 11B, as in boy. And just give me a moment and I'll give you the chapter number. Um, and if we were to dissolve? If we were to um, take over the cemetery, yep. do we. Uh, is there just a deed or something? Is it just a simple transference of a deed? Or there ought there... to be what I would call an asset transfer agreement beforehand. Sort of, okay, this is what we plan on doing, and this is how we're going to effectuate this transfer. So, essentially, upon dissolution, then there will be probably, I'm just thinking like a bill of sale for the assets, some sort of document that says that, okay, now these assets and this account will become the property of the town of Callis. And then as to the real estate, it'll probably would probably just be a quick claim deed. I can't imagine anything more I mean, than that. Wouldn't have to do a um, appraisal or a, what do you call it? Um, Survey. 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 Yeah. It depends on the nature of the boundaries. I mean, if there was a question about the boundaries of the property, it certainly would be in the town's interest to have a survey done so that it would know what it was acquiring and making sure that there weren't any title issues that go along with it. Um, survey isn't required but it might be a good idea okay hmm. um, and I just also would suggest that the town we've done some level of due diligence about this but I think that there ought to be maybe just a little bit heightened level of due diligence about the monies and, and the obligations that go along with those monies yeah um, there might be some some documents there that say for example this money is to be used for this specific purpose so that we know what those purposes are and make sure that those things can be fulfilled. Um, so, yeah, just it says it's not there. What does it say? Paco Hill Cemetery of East Montpelier in the county of Washington, Jim. What year was that? Two hundred and eight dollars and forty cents. I thought it said eight, eight, uh, 1879. Where did I it, think that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Down at the bottom. Right, the signature line or something. I don't know. Just, just, just. 18, 1892. 1892. 1892. Yeah. Back up. Okay. Please, just mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, I mean, 1892. Oh, the siblings are involved. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a piece of land in Calus. Land in Calus. And yeah. I think it's called yeah. the Poplar Hill Cemetery Association. Oh, Okay. And there airs and assigns a certain piece of land in Calus. In Calus, yes. But why does it say East Mount Pillar up there? It's, it's driving the road, the highway. Oh, it's, it's all. Where does it say? Where does That's it say? what I think. That's what I think. Calus, Washington. By full satisfaction by George Butler. Here's where it says East Mount Pillar, but it's saying. Oh, oh he's from, but the seller is he's from, from East Mount Pillar. Right. Right. It's, I, no, I think it's just yeah. the recognizing that the trust, the Poplar Hill Cemetery Association probably had its place of business in East mm. Mount Pillar, ah, just as it does right now. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's where its sort of business office was at the time. Mm -hmm. But the land is in Calvary. Oh, oh, I see, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it's got lovely meets and bounds as long as you can find that yeah, ash tree. I was going to say, how from the ash tree, huh? Ash tree. That's very important, the emerald ash I was going to say, it's probably got an emerald ash borer disease now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's probably a legally sufficient description to transfer property in the state of Vermont, although right. it may not be, but. <laughs> it's like more or less. More or right. less, right. More or less it's over by that tree somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, think, I, mean, I think our goal is, is to work the with, with you folks. That's that. what we want to do. And the cemetery commission. and So we just need to, to work together to solve this problem. Well, we don't have any options or choices, so we've got to work with whoever we can work with. <laughs> well, then you're lucky you got us to work with. Right. Now you have a team. Right. Now it's bigger, so you, maybe you feel a little better. Yeah. Okay. And meanwhile, we'll pray to the sky gods. For, <laughs> for like it to rain pennies? No, not pennies anymore. That wouldn't help. Not to, do you, John, um, do you think there's it would be possible for a representative from the Cemetery Commission, Cal's, to be, you know, basically the appointed point person? Appointed to our Cemetery to Commission? Your, to, to your group <laughs> and in East Montpelier, if they did the same thing, then you'd have two more, sure. uh, two more people. We're going to have uh, one. Juanita? Juanita? 
Bless you. There you go. <laughs> because I'm going to tell us where my fifty percent. you got you got a rep from each <laughs> town, and they work with you and assist you with the business, but also help you transition this. You know. Yeah. So on, so there you go. So you got, you got one more helper. One. How much room barb do I need to have? And <laughs> <laughs> maybe how much you need to take rooms. <laughs> and maybe when you talk to Seth, you know, he can, you know, open the door for you guys to talk to the cemetery, mm -hmm. unless you already have a cemetery commission. We already have a cemetery commission. Uh, Elliot Marks is the. Okay. Or, or actually, he's just he stepped down as a. I think Alan Plouffe also stepped down, so I don't know. There's who. a young fellow who's taken over. There the, you go. The yes. cemetery yeah. commission. Well, you have some young people on yours, uh -huh. you, and Fletcher. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Juanita. And Juanita. Okay. And John. Okay. Saturday. Uh, that's I'm a senior citizen. Birthday. That's nothing. That's also that's nothing. <laughs> it's still a senior. Most places consider you a senior citizen. Not You're going to milk that for all you can. Damn you? right. <laughs> and, and, and you yeah, know how to get a hold of me. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, <laughs> let's keep the discussion, you know, let's keep things moving. And meanwhile, if there's any other documents or anything else you need to... I don't know, Jim, can you think of anything else we'll, we want? The bylaws, I think. The bylaws would be helpful. We've got the, we've got the what's needed, the deed, we know where the deed is located. Yeah. Um, we've got a sort of general outline right now of what the financials, where the accounts are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there was, if we're moving toward that. The chapter, um, it's Title 11B, as in boy, for, dis, uh, for dissolution of nonprofit mm -hmm. corporations. It's Chapter 14. Chapter 14. Chapter 14 of 11B. Um, <clears throat> we're going to just plan of dissolution approved by the memberships and filing articles of dissolution with the Secretary of State's office. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's too no. bad. So they would probably have to hold another meeting and vote to dissolve? Yes. yes. We, we already did that, actually. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, you, you should look at that, um, look at that statute. It, it, not that we're encouraging you to dissolve, okay, but you should look and understand what is actually formally required to do that. Right. Okay. Questions, comments, thoughts, ideas? Well, thank you for your work with Poplar. Yeah. Thank you. Wanda. I've never been up there until today. It's a great little It's like a secret driveway. Yeah, yeah it is. I love the little driveway with the gated mm -hmm. thing. It's very, yeah, very special. I can see why you're attached and wanting to put it into good hands. Yeah. Well, actually, we were even thinking if you were willing to take over. And, um, we would like to still be involved as perhaps friends of the cemetery or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you guys have the, the history. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. the, the, the mental, you know, the historical knowledge. So you're, I think, Andy you're, does. You're, <laughs> your involvement is, is, is really important and critical, I think. And Paul does. Yeah. And Paul, where is Paul? Where do you live, Paul? Liberty is about failure now, but 30 years ago when I bought my lots, I lived in North Oh. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Um, anything else anybody has? All right. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, I want to have a favor. Oh, aye. 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 aye.